So in this series of six videos, I'm going to show you how I've created these different text effects. I'm going to be starting with the impact font and the page size I'm using is A4. If you want to get similar results with the different settings, then you need to be working at the same scale. So let's get started. So with this one, I want to create a, a mountain type effect. I made my snow on top a little bit blue to try and give it contrast against the white background which kind of almost makes it look like sky so I think this time perhaps I'll just put a blue background behind so first thing I want to do is grab my rectangle tool I want to come over and just drag a rectangle over the whole lot and then we want to give it a blue color so we come down give it a blue down here um, if we go to our fill and stroke dialog box I need to come up and click on my uh, fill and stroke dialog box button at the top and then I'm just going to make that blue paler to be more like a sky. If I come up to the color wheel, click on the color wheel at the top here, and I'll rotate that round a touch to something a little bit more paler. So that'll do me. So I'm going to go back to my selection tool, and I'm going to drop that down behind the writing. So the next thing I want to do is concentrate on the writing. So I want to adjust my writing using a path effect. Um, first thing I need to do though is convert my text into a path. So I want these to be separate paths so I can work on them individually. So the way I'm going to do this is if we click on our text, so just our text is selected, we can come up to path and down to object to path. When I recorded this video, I recorded it in Inkscape 1.2. We're now into Inkscape 1.3, so I just wanted to quickly go over how we split up text into individual paths in 1.3. So if we select our text, we can just come up to path, down to object to path, and this will now convert all of the text into a single path. So if we want to split up our letters into individual paths, we need to come back up to path, come down to split path, and that will split the individual letters into separate paths. I've included a lowercase i just to show that because the, uh, the dot and the base of the i are separate, it's converted them into separate paths. If we want to turn these back into a single path, if we click off, we can drag a box over the top of both sections of the eye to select them both, and then we can come up to Path and down to Union. Right, let's get back to the original video. And now we can see the bounding boxes just go around each individual letter. So we can take one letter at a time and work on it. So let's click off. We'll start with the A. I want to add a path effect. So I'm going to come up to Path, down to Path Effects, and then over on our right hand side we need to add a path effect. So we go down to the bottom, click on Add Path Effect, and we've got our selection of path effects that we can use. I want Perspective Envelope, so you can find Perspective Envelope, and we click on that one. So what I want to do is roughly adjust my letters, so they're looking more mountain shaped. We can do fine adjustments later on with other tools, but for now I'm just doing the rough work. So if we come over, we get our nodes tool. And now you can see we've got um, nodes around our letter shape. And we've also got these nodes in the corner of the um, bounding box. So these are handles that we can use to adjust our text. So we can change the perspective of our text. So we can drag these about. And without affecting our original text, which we can still see is sitting in the same position, we can just change the perspective. Bring that down a bit, actually. So what I'm going to do here is because this side of my A is rather large, I'm going to go to the nodes on the actual letter. So if I drag a box over these three nodes here, I'm just going to move them over a touch to the right to thin that side out a little bit. We could also move over the node at the top of the A and we don't actually look too bad there. So I'm just going to click on a node down here again and I'm just going to hold down my control button and I'm going to get rid of these handles. So if we click on these, that pops them back into the nodes and we'll straighten that line. So I think I'm quite happy with that. So I'm going to leave that as it is and I'm going to do a similar thing to the C. So selection tool, I'm going to click off. I'm going to click on my C. I'm going to move this one a bit closer. So to about there. Then we can come up to our path effects. So we come down, we're at a path effect. We want the perspective envelope. And now we've got everything over on the right hand side. 
we can come over get our nodes tool and then we can sit there and warp our our letter to look more how we want so let's click off I'm fairly happy with that now I had squared this one off a little bit so perhaps we come back and do that in a bit so with this one we need to make this be a little bit more mountain shaped so I'm going to get my selection tool, we're going to select him, actually oh, sorry, go back to my nodes tool and now we can just work on the individual nodes rather than adjusting it with a perspective window or anything else. All I'm going to do is drag on the nodes and make it a little more mountain shaped. So this one is a smooth node, ah, it's a half smooth node. So if we drag on this side we can turn it to a proper smooth node. So half smooth node um, has a straight line on one side so we can only adjust one side of the node. So by dragging on the path between the nodes, it's turned that straight line into a curve. So now we've got a handle on both sides, so we can adjust it with a little bit more control. Can't see what's going on there. I think we've got a, got a node in the middle of there, so I might just delete that. Move that up. up to, grab that node, just move that node up a touch. And I'm going to drag a box over some of these nodes in the center here, and I'm just going to lift those up as well. I'm going to hold down control. So now it just moved vertically or in 15 degree increments, but I think that'll do. Over here, we can see our A has got quite a sharp corner. This is because this is a cusp node or a corner node. So if we select it, oh, we've still got all of the perspective envelope um, information still there. So it's, it's still just a path effects. What we can do is finalize this. So if we come up to path, come down to object to path, and that finalizes our path effects. So now it's fixed. So we can't go back into the path effect and adjust the path effect, but we can sit there and adjust our nodes. So what I'm going to do with that one is just turn it to a smooth node and we can bring the side in and it just rounds off that top corner. Our B has got some funny shapes going on there. So what I'm going to do is go back into the B. I'm going to zoom in so I can see what I'm actually doing. Can't actually see what I'm doing there, but I'm going to press delete because I think there's more than one. Might still be more than one. Press delete again. All right, that was it. Control Z to put the node back. And we must have handles that are pulling it out of shape. So if we take that back, is that on that one? Yeah, so if we take that up. So that's kind of corrected the top of that B section. This is a diamond, so it's a cusp node. So if we turn this to a smooth node by coming up to the button at the top here, which makes selected nodes smooth, we click on that, that turns it to a smooth node, so our handles are in line, which means that we've got a nice smooth curve going through that node. So if we click off, it'll now be smooth. So down here we've got a cusp node as well, and this corner of the B looks a, a little bit square. I'm going to click on my B again. This one's still a cusp node, so I'm just going to turn that to a smooth node. This one I'm going to leave as a cusp node because I want a corner there, but I'm just going to adjust the handle so it smooths off a little, perhaps back on the A. I'm going to grab hold of both of these nodes and I'm just going to move them down a touch and we move that one up. So if we zoom out a little bit. The other thing that was different on this one was the C was a bit squarer on the bottom. So if we click on our C, I think we need to do a similar thing. So I'm just going to finalize my um, path effect by coming over to path and down to object path. So now we can't adjust it with our path effects, but we can come in and adjust the individual nodes. So I'm going to drag a box over these two nodes here and I'm just going to lower those down a touch to about there. I'm going to click off, click back onto my C and this one I think I'm just going to delete. Then we can adjust the handles until we're happy with it. I'm going to zoom in a touch. I want to bring the top of this inner part of the C down a little bit. So what I'm going to do is grab the nodes on there and then if we're careful we can just move that down just to thicken out the top of that C a little bit. Zoom out a touch, see what we're looking like. I'm going to move these ones up a little bit. Try and make them look a little bit more in line with the others. So that's not looking too bad. So another tool we can use if we're doing things like this and we want to do some fine little tweaks, we can use the tweak tool. So if we come down here, we've got this little wave. If we click on this and this allows us to adjust things. I have made a video on this going through all of the different controls, but we can adjust things by dragging on the paths. You You've got lots of different modes, which I've gone through in the other video. The one I'm thinking about using is push parts of path in any direction. So if we select this one, we probably want to turn down the force. The force is how much 
how strong the effect works. So if we turn this down, we just turn it down to 10 and we can just drag on, oh, sorry. You have got to select the paths that you're gonna work on. So I'm gonna select the A, hold down shift. I'm gonna select all of them so we can just work on all of them together. Go back into the tweak tool. I'm gonna to reduce the width a little bit and then we can just pull on parts of the path that we want to affect. So if we wanna just add in a little bit more shape in places, but we can go around and we can just tweak our lettering if we wanted to make it look a little bit more mountain shaped. And of course we can make our width bigger if you want to affect a larger area. So I'm just gonna grab the bottom of this B over, drag it over a little bit. So I think I'm fairly happy with that. So that's just a, another way you can add a little bit more fine adjustment to your lettering. Actually it does look a bit peculiar down there. I'm gonna adjust that again. So I might just grab my nodes tool so now we're happy with the shapes, what I'm gonna do is change back to my selection tool. I'm gonna to combine these together into a single path. So to combine them together, we're just gonna come up to path and down to union. So now they're a single path made up of all these sub paths. Next thing I wanna do is give it a gradient to give it a bit of a mounting color. So we come over to our um, fill and stroke dialog box. We can give it a linear gradient. So this second button along and that applies a linear gradient. When we apply a linear gradient, the gradient bar is always horizontal. So we come over and get our gradient tool on the left hand side, and you can see our horizontal gradient bar. Um, one end's always fully opaque and one end's always fully transparent. So first thing we need to do is make the transparent end fully opaque. And now we wanna adjust these in the direction that we want our gradient to be going. So we need to put one at the bottom and we need to take the other one, put it at the top. And then we can color them. So the bottom, uh, sorry, so the top, I want a lightish brown. So we can rotate this. Oh, it's quite bright, isn't it? So let's take it down and dull it a little bit. So that's the top of our mountain. I'm gonna come down to the bottom and I'm gonna change the color of the bottom stop. So if we select the bottom stop, at the moment it's black. I'm gonna rotate it around so we've got a brown and I'm gonna put it to a darkish brown. Doesn't look a whole lot different to the top one. Let's change that to a bit lighter. I just lift that stop up. So we've got some of the darker color a little bit higher up. So I think I'm happy with that, that'll do me for now. So now we've got our, our main mountain shape with some basic coloring. I now want to add some snow to the top. So the way I'm gonna do this is to create a separate shape that fits over the top, snow colored, but we want it to be within the boundary of our text. So the way we're gonna do this is create something called a clip group. So if we've got our selection tool, so with our text selected, we're gonna right click and then we're gonna come down to set clip group. What this does is it creates a clip group. If we go over to our um, layers and objects dialog box, we can see in here, we've got this, this group. Um, it's got a little pair of scissors to show that it's a clip group and inside you've got clip. The little folder clip just contains our original path. But what this means now is that we can add things to this group and it will be clipped by the shape of the letters. So we won't have any colors overhanging. Now we can either create our shapes separately and then drop them on top of the clip group in our layers and objects dialog box, or if we come back, we can right click on top of our text and we can go down to enter group down here. If we do this now, everything we do will be inside our clip group. So if we come over, grab our Bezier tool, um, I wanna set this to B spline, just so it creates curves for us. So we can just come along Go right round to the beginning and we create a nice shape. And then we can come over and we can click on, we'll give it a whitish color to put some white snow on top of our mountain. Now I am gonna add a little bit of blue to this just, just to um, give it a bit of um, depth. So to do that, I'm going to come back to my fill and stroke dialog box on the tab at the top. I'm gonna to give it a linear gradient and then we can come over, grab our gradients tool and we can adjust our stops to the right places. And this stop is our fully transparent stop, so we just need to take that straight up to fully white. And if we go back to our top stop, we can adjust the color of this. So let's bring it down a little bit and make it a bit bluey. So let's drag that round, click over here. Oh, too blue. That'll do us, that's quite pale, isn't it? I'm quite happy with that. So the next thing I wanna do is just add a little bit more color in down the bottom. So we can do the same thing. While we're inside our clip group, we can come up, get our Bezier tool. I'm gonna to turn off the B spline. I'm gonna go back to regular Bezier tool, just so I've got some 
sharp edges and I'm literally just going to go along the bottom and add in a few spiky bits here and there and then what I'm going to do is colour this hold down my uh, mouse wheel so I can scroll up come along the bottom click back so now we've got this white shape on the bottom oh we've actually come outside of our clip group so if we go up to our, our layers and objects dialog box I must have come out of the group at some point so now our path is separate so to put it in all we need to do is grab hold of the path bring it down and drop it on top of the clip group and now put it back inside our clip group so I want to change the color of this so if we come up I'm just going to change back to my selection tool we can go back to the um, fill and stroke dialog box by clicking on the tab at the top and I want to make this a dark color so I'm going to use my dropper tool so I can get the darker brown so we're starting off with that darker brown color and then what I'm going to do is just adjust it up a bit so it's darker so clearly this is a bit harsh and doesn't look very good at the bottom so what I'm going to do is add blur to it so if we grab hold of our blur slider we can blur it out and it just adds in a little bit of color texture at the bottom here so we've, we can see some of these shapes um, coming through I seem to have gained a bit of a glitch in my Inkscape um, program it's happened a few times I think I'm gonna to have to reinstall Inkscape so what I'm going to do is drag the box over the whole lot and I'm just going to shift everything off to the side so we can have a look at it without that box in the way and there's our, our finished mounting shape so that's how you can create mounting text or whatever shape text you want and we'll move on to the next one thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video